All right, so if you saw the unboxing I made for this watch, the ITIL Horizon smartwatch, you would know that one of the reasons why I got it was because two people commented asking me to get the watch. One of the comments just said ITIL Horizon and I was like, okay. Now, to be honest, I did not expect this watch to be as good as you're about to find out in this video. Now, of course, there are one or two things that are not good, like from my experience. You may find out about those things and say, this guy is too picky. And to that, I will say to each his own. So yeah, this is the ITEL Horizon Smartwatch review and uh, hopefully you'll like it. Okay, so let's start with the design. Now this watch has that traditional watch look because it is round and to me it looks more masculine than feminine. I'm not saying that women cannot use the watch. Anyways, on the right side you get the buttons. The one at the top acts as the switch. You can use it to power the watch on or off. It is also what you use to turn the screen on or off. The round button is what you use to access the menu as well as control the watch. And yes, I did say that in the unboxing I made for the watch, so I'm glad I was right and I think I deserve a like or at least a subscription. So yeah, subscribe to the channel. What I will say I got wrong about the button is that you cannot use it as the power button. So no matter how long you press it, it is not going to shut down the device. So uh, I'll say I got like 50% of what this button does. Basically, you can use the button to turn the screen on, but you can't use it to turn the screen off. And uh, like I said earlier, you can also use the button to control the menu while using the watch. The last button on the watch is just used to access some of the sports or exercise features that the watch offers. And just so you know, you can double tap the top and the bottom buttons, bottom buttons to access some more features as well. I'm going to talk about that later on, but uh, yeah, they are multi, multi-functional, if that's the right word to use. And if we switch over to the left, you get the speaker. I did not mention the speaker in the unboxing because I did not see it on time until I started using the watch. And at the bottom of the watch, you get the microphone for making phone calls. And this watch also records voices. Like you can use this to take voice notes. I'll talk about that later on as well and then you have the sensors and the charging points. So that's basically what the watch looks like in terms of design. I like the way it is designed. My only problem is that the microphone is at the bottom. So you know that most of the time the watch is going to be like this. The mo most of the watches that I've used, the microphones are usually here. So when you're talking, your, your wrist or your skin is not like attached or pressing on the mic. So the audio is supposed to be clear enough. But one of the concerns that I had about this watch was the microphone being under the watch. So making phone calls to me was not ideal, but I'll show you a test that I did when it comes to phone calls and the results I beat, should I say, mixed. Well, you'll find out about that later on. Something I forgot to mention about the speaker is that you can use it to listen to music from your phone. And the watch also stores music. You don't necessarily have to connect the watch to your phone before you can listen to music. I'll talk about that later on as well. And finally, we have the straps. So yeah, the straps are made out of silicon and they are detachable, so that's good. I also like that the strap has these uh, strap keepers, like two of them, which makes the watch like very fit when you wear it. You don't have this one dangling around because one strap keeper is too inside. I don't know how to explain it, so it's best I just show you what I'm talking about. So hopefully by now I'm showing you what, I'm, what I mean. But overall, I believe that the watch has a very nice design. Something that I'm a bit skeptical about is the fact that this watch is IP68, which means water and dust resistant. Now, on the box, it says that it is IP68, but I checked on the website because I like being sure sometimes. Sometimes I do research on the videos I make, sometimes I feel too lazy because I'm using it so I shouldn't have to research what I'm already using. But anyways, I searched on the website and there was nothing about it being water resistant. That is something that I feel like they should have advertised on the website to even make people want to buy the watch. So for now, I'm not going to recommend that you use this watch close to any kind of liquid. Just try as much as you can to keep it away from liquid. I used it once while I was washing and not clothes splits and water splashed. I cleaned it up nothing happened it's been fine since but since they did not put it on the website just on the box 
ah, I would not say that you should consider it water resistant yet until I can fully confirm that. So for those of you that already have the watch, if you have tried it with water and you found that it was okay, then good, let me know in the comments and I think that myth should be debunked, then we should know that yeah, this is actually water resistant. Overall, the design is quite nice, I'm only concerned about the microphone at the bottom or at the back. One of the aspects where this watch really excels is in its display. Like if there's any reason or one of the reasons why I would say anybody should get this watch then it's going to be because of the screen. It's an AMOLED screen. If you have used an AMOLED screen before then you should know what to expect. The colors are very vibrant, the screen is very sharp thanks to the resolution and brightness outdoors I would say that this watch is very usable outdoors. There is no auto brightness on the watch so you have to make sure that you turn up the brightness before you go out but i have noticed that even with the brightness not too bright like not too high the watch is still very visible but maybe it's because it is the rainy season and the sun is not always out so maybe that's why i cannot really test the full potential of outdoor use in the sun but from my experience so far the brightness is very good but one thing is that even if you are outdoors and you forgot to even increase the brightness of the watch well you can always use your phone to increase the brightness so that in case you are struggling and you really want to use the watch but the screen is too dark for you and you can't see a lot just bring out your phone access the app there's an app for the watch i'll be talking about that very soon access the app and from there you can increase the brightness i don't use that feature a lot but I'm, I'm glad it's there. I just wanted to bring it out so you guys can know about it. So the watch comes with a 1.43 inch screen and the resolution is 466 by 466. I think it is the highest resolution I've used on any watch and I can't complain. Like I said, the watch looks very sharp and everything looks very clear. Another great thing about the screen is that it is a 60 hz screen. So if you interact with it, you will experience that it is very smooth. I actually like that it was made with a 60 hz screen because most phones these days are either 60, 90 or 120 hz screens. I don't know if there's more than that. I don't buy a lot of expensive phones and I don't do a lot of research on expensive phones. But in the end, you're not going to feel that big difference when you are done using your phone that has like a 90 hertz screen and then you start using the watch when you are used to a phone with a 90 hertz screen or a 120 hertz screen you are going to always notice that lag when you are using different screens but i've experienced it a lot so yeah i'm glad that this watch has a very decent screen that is as smooth as most modern day devices one thing that i will say i'm a bit uncertain about is when i interact with the watch you know, on most watches, if you want to go back, you slide to the right. I should be doing it this way because of the way the camera is facing. But anyways, you slide to the right and you should go back. But on this watch, sometimes when I slide to the right, it doesn't work. So I feel like I have to slide from the edge of the watch to the right. And that is when it works. I'm not complaining. Maybe that's how the watch was designed, which is fine. But it's just that I'm used to watches that you can just slide from anywhere and you can go back. But with this one, it will take some getting used to, especially if you have used other watches and you are used to that way of sliding back. But with this one, you have to, sometimes you have to slide from the edge. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but if you want it to work all the time, just make sure you slide from the edge and it should work fine. All right, before I forget, well, as this watch has an AMOLED screen, it also has that always on display feature. And the good thing about the watch is that um, it depends on the watch face that you select. You know, with the app, you can choose the watch face that you want so all of them or the ones that i've tested they had their own unique always on display faces that you can choose another good thing that i like about the always on display feature is that um, you can choose the option for it to be always on when the watch is attached to your wrist so whenever you're not wearing the watch always on display will be turned off and when you're wearing it always on display will be on it's a good way to save battery instead of just keeping the watch forgetting to turn off always on display the watch will detect that it is no longer attached to your wrist and it is going to turn off the always on display option. So overall, the screen, very decent. One of the best things about the watch as well. Most AMOLED screens, most people don't complain about AMOLED screens because they are very good in terms of brightness, colors, saturation. Colors and saturation, those are the same thing. But anyways, the AMOLED screen is very good. Okay, so we have gotten to the section of watches that I really enjoy talking about and for this watch, well, there's a lot to talk about. I'm going to say that I will not be able to talk about everything, but I will definitely talk about the important things that I think everybody should be interested in. Okay, so to begin, the watch has all those health features like your heart rate, blood oxygen levels, stress levels and sleep measurements. 
I like that when you are measuring your heart rate with the watch, the screen doesn't turn off. And as you are measuring your heart rate with the watch, at first you are not going to see any numbers, but after the watch has gotten like an average, then it's going to show you how your heart rate goes up and down. As for the sleep measuring feature of the watch, in fact on all watches, there's something I don't understand, like how does the watch detect that you are asleep? The only thing I can think about is that the watch notices that you don't use your phone and you're not taking any steps because obviously the watch should know where you're using your phone because it has access to notifications and interactions with your phones and for the steps aspects the watch knows that you are not walking around because the watch measures your steps so if you are not using your phone and you are not walking around while wearing the watch then you are probably asleep so i don't know maybe I, to me it sounds too simple there should be other things that are checked to know if you are asleep but uh, maybe i'll have to do more research on that when i'm free talking about the step counter feature the watch will show you how many steps you have taken obviously Plus, you get to see some other info concerning all the steps that you have taken, like the calories you have burned. One feature that I have not used with this watch is the women's health feature. Now, when I was creating my profile with the app, I selected that I am male, so I don't know why it's still showing me women's health features because it is asking me to select a date on my calendar to show when my period starts. It's not something I want to talk about in this video, but let's talk about the app. So when I first installed the app, I didn't really think it was made by iTel because it doesn't really look anything related to iTel. But after using the app for a while, I can see that now I am comfortable with it. And uh, if you are going to be using it for the first time as well, then I think you are going to be okay with it. So from the app, you can do things like select apps you want to receive notifications from. When you choose an app from this list, all notifications from the app will appear on the watch. For me, only WhatsApp is selected. My only issue with the app is that it has a predetermined list of apps that will receive notifications. Like if your app is not part of the list of apps, then you have to scroll down and then choose this option that says other apps. But the only issue with that is that um, let's say you have two apps, one you want to receive notifications from and the other one you don't want to receive notifications from. So if those two apps are not on the list of apps that the app created, then they are going to be in the other list, like the list at the bottom. So if you enable that other list, then you have to receive notifications from the app you want and the app you don't want. That's just the issue. I wish they had made it in a way that all apps will have a button that you can say, okay, I want to receive notifications from this app. I don't want to receive notifications from this app. Hopefully they are going to work on that in the future. So there's this option called theater mode. If you activate it, First, it's going to decrease the brightness of your screen and it's also going to stop the watch from vibrating when you receive notifications. The watch is still going to indicate that you have a notification. Like if you tap on the power button, which is at the top, not the round one, you are going to see a red triangle at the bottom of the screen, which indicates that you have a notification. But the only thing is that the watch is not going to vibrate. I like turning this theater mode most of the time because I like it when I can see notifications, but the watch doesn't have to vibrate. But if you receive phone calls, then the watch is going to vibrate. And one funny thing about the theater mode is that uh, if you increase the brightness by a little bit, then theater mode will turn off. And as I mentioned before, brightness reduces when you turn on theater mode. So by bringing up the brightness, maybe the watch will feel like you are done with theater mode and you want everything to be back to normal. So with theater mode off, then the watch will start vibrating for every notification you receive. It can be a bit annoying if you receive a lot of notifications and the watch just keeps vibrating on your hand. And when it comes to vibrations for the watch, from my experience, it is very good. You will not miss your phone calls when this watch vibrates. When it comes to phone calls, well, I mentioned it in the beginning, I had my doubts and that's because the microphone is under the watch. So as you're talking, it's like, if you even wear the watch too tight, the microphone is blocked. So I did some tests and well, I'm not going to just play them for you. I'm going to tell you what I experienced. So I first made a phone call using the Techno Common 12. I know it's an old phone. It's just one of the phones that I knew that I'm not using anymore. So I'll just be using it for doing tests like this for my videos. And the voice did not come out clear enough. So I tried it like three times. But what I experienced when I was calling people using the watch, they did not complain about audio being muffled. Uh, just hear a bit of what the voice sounds like with the Camon 12. All right, so I'm back to the watch and uh, yeah, by now there should be a clear difference between what the watch sounds like and what my phone actually sounds like. 
So because I knew that people were not complaining whenever I called them with the watch, I felt like, okay, maybe there's something wrong with the phone itself. So I decided to do the same test using the Techno Carbon 30. And to me, the audio was a bit better. Well, not even a bit, way better than what it sounded like on the Carbon 12. So you can hear a play of it to let me guys know what you think. Okay, so I just switched the phone that I use for testing the phone calls. As you can see, this phone that I'm calling right now is the Carbon 30. I was using the Camera 12 to make the phone calls for the test. I know it's an old phone, but it's a bit strange because now the audio sounds better. If I had not tried this test myself, well, I wouldn't have known that the watch sounds this way. So is it like they only want us to make phone calls to modern day devices using this watch? I'm not really sure, but there's the test. And now it is making me feel like the tests that I carried out in the past have to be redone because I believe I used, this is the phone, I used this phone to carry out all the tests. <sighs> Tech. Anyways, one thing that I would say I do not like about this watch for making phone calls is that uh, if you're using the watch, you can switch to your phone. Like maybe you don't want to continue using the watch to make the phone call because the audio is too loud. You can switch it to your phone, but there is no way to bring it back to the watch unless you go to your phone and then you switch it to the watch. So that means that if your phone is in your pocket or in your bag and you really wanted to answer a phone call using the watch, well, maybe if you answered it and you accidentally tapped the button, well, you have to go and check your bag or remove your phone from your pocket to switch back to the watch. Not very ideal, not very convenient, but it's just one of those things that you have to live with. But uh, it's not always bad news. Something I really like about this watch is when you are selecting your contacts. So with most watches, if you want to select contacts using the app, it's only going to show you the name of the people that you have. But with this watch, it is going to show you their names and their phone numbers. So if you have people that have multiple phone numbers, you are always going to have the option to choose one phone number. You know, there are some people that have like four phone numbers and you have to try, maybe they have that one that always works and then they have the rest that are sometimes turned off, sometimes turned on. So with the app, you'll be able to choose that one number instead of giving the app to choose any number and then you try to call the number and to say the number is switched off. Okay, the final thing about using this watch to make phone calls is that you can only make normal phone calls. You can't make WhatsApp calls or Zoom calls any internet calls you can't make with this watch. I don't know if it's just the watches in this price range that don't do that. I believe premium watches should be able to do like WhatsApp calls and all those internet calls. Well, this is what I can afford for now, so it's the only thing I can see. As mentioned earlier, you can use this watch to listen to music from your phone as well as even store music files on the watch. Now, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, I don't know the size of the watch. I haven't checked the website to see if I can find anything that relates to size. I searched for megabytes or MB, gigabytes. I doubt that this watch can do up to gigabytes, but nothing about the size of the watch came up on the website. So I don't know anything about the size, but uh, yeah, you can store your music files on the watch. And recording your voice, I mentioned that as well. You can use the watch to record your voice, but the only thing that I don't like about it is that at least I haven't found a way. You cannot transfer your recordings from your watch to your phone or maybe to your computer. But honestly, it is a decent feature. Like there are some people that maybe they get good ideas at night. So if you're wearing the watch while you sleep, which is something you can do if you want. Well, if you have those ideas, you can easily just tap on the voice recording option on the watch and then you record your ideas. So at this point, I believe I have said every important thing that I want to about the watch. So for the rest of the stuff, I'm just going to mention them and maybe just say a few things. I'm not going to go into too much detail. So there are games that come with the watch. I wouldn't say they are really necessary, but at least they are okay to have. I've only played like three games since I got the watch and well, it is decent to pass time, but nothing out of the ordinary. There's also the security feature on the watch. If you activate it, the watch will lock itself, even if it is attached to your wrist. You always have to enter the code just to have access to the watch after the screen turns off. So if you turn it on, enter the code, you can have access. There's also the race to wake feature, which I never use, but I believe some of you watching this video like the feature. So yeah, here you go, the watch has it. The watch also has an AI feature, which I also don't use a lot because basically what it does is it just opens Google Gemini on your phone. So whatever you ask the watch is going to be transferred to the phone and you get your answer from there. And the last feature I'll be talking about is the emergency contact feature. So to activate it or to use it, you just need to long press the button at the bottom. 
it's going to call the number you have set. So those are all the features that I want to talk about in this video. There are a lot more, but if I start talking about all of them, I'll get too tired. Right now, I'm moving too tired. The only thing I would say is I missed from this watch is that cover to turn off the screen feature. This watch doesn't have that. It's something that I was used to with other wrist watches, but uh, I've been using this watch for a week now and I'm starting to get used to it not being here. So battery life on this watch is better than most watches that I have used. I decided to experiment on it and um, charge the watch to 100%. I disconnected it on a Saturday the 18th of August just to see how long it would get to 90% and it didn't get to 90% until Tuesday the 20th of August. So from my experience, battery life is very good. According to the box, it comes with a 360 mAh battery, it is very decent. You can also try battery saver mode, well, I don't think it is necessary because with this watch I don't think you'll be charging every night. So so far that I've gotten it and I've used it, I've only charged it twice. Alright, so I got this ITEL Horizon smartwatch on Jumia for 38,000 Naira. If you are interested in getting it for yourself, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But the only thing I will say is that uh, the watch is usually out of stock. I had to even wait for like two weeks before I got the watch. Like, I put it on my cart and as I was ready to pay, I think I wanted to pay the next day. They said it was out of stock. So I had to wait for two weeks before I got the watch. Seems like people like buying the watch. I'm not really sure. But uh, when it comes to the price, I would say it is fair because having an AMOLED screen is already enough for that that's 8,000 Naira. The watch is really fair for its price. Alright, so that's my review for the Horizon smartwatch, the ITEL Horizon smartwatch. And as you have watched, there's a lot of good things to say about the watch. It has a decent screen, it has really good features like the functions of the watch and it has a really good battery. The only thing that I'm not too certain about is the call quality. Most of the people that I've called, they haven't complained about it. So it's just from the test that I did that I found out that the, my voice is muffled sometimes. But overall, I think the watch is great. And as you know, most of these watches are good for helping you keep up with notifications and phone calls. So you can do that with this watch. This is probably not going to be the last video for the watch because as I've said earlier, there are lots of other features the watch offers which I will not be able to cover in this video. I feel like this video is already long. I've been here for almost an hour after I cut this video and remove all the bad takes. I'm sure it is going to be like maybe 15 to 20 minutes long. But yeah, I've been here for too long talking about the watch. And yeah, if you guys have questions about the watch, let me know in the comments and I'll respond. But besides that, thank you for watching. We are almost at 1,000 subscribers. It's been over a year. I'm glad that we're heading there. Anyways, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.